Ever wonder how that shiny gold bar or silver coin gets from deep underground to your hands? It all starts with a rock, and a whole lot of ingenuity. Today, we're breaking down the mining process for gold and silver, from crushing rocks to crafting bullion. Let's dive in. Step 1. Extraction. Miners blast or dig ore, rock packed with tiny bits of gold and silver from the earth. Think open pit mines with giant shovels or underground tunnels with dynamite. These rocks get hauled to the surface in trucks that can carry 200 tons of a pop. Once they arrive, it's time for the rock crusher. This beast, the primary crusher, breaks the ore into smaller pieces, about the size of your fist. It's loud, it's dusty, and it's the first step to unlocking the treasure inside. Next up, grinding. The crushed ore heads to massive ball mills. Think giant tumbling drums filled with steel balls. They pulverize the rock into a fine powder like sand. Why? Because gold and silver are often locked in microscopic flex, sometimes just a few grams per ton. This powder's our ticket to getting them out. Here's where the business kicks in. Grinding's energy intensive, electricity costs can hit $50 to $100 per ton of ore. Companies balance this with throughput. More tons processed, more metal recovered. It's a numbers game. Step 3, concentration. The powder's mixed with water to make a slurry then pumped into flotation tanks. Chemicals like xanthates make gold and silver stick to air bubbles which float to the top as a frothy concentrate. The junk, called tailings, sinks and gets hauled away. This concentrates now 10 to 30% metal, way richer than the original ore. Labs test it to confirm grades because every ounce counts. Tailings management's a big deal too. Companies spend millions to store this waste safely, avoiding environmental headaches. Now smelting. The concentrates dried and fed into a furnace at 1,200 degrees Celsius. Impurities burn off or turn into slag, a glassy waste product. What's left? A molten mix of gold, silver, and other metals. This gets poured into bars called door, semi-pure, usually 35 to 80 percent precious metal. Smelting's a choke point. Fuel and labor costs stack up, and companies like Newmont or Barrick might process 50,000 ounces a year per site. Doors their cash cow, ready to ship to refineries. Royalties, say, 3% in Peru hit here too, so margins matter. Step 5. Refining. Door heads to a high-tech refinery, maybe in Switzerland or the Dominican Republic's free trade zones. Two main methods. Electrolysis zaps the metal with current, plating pure gold or silver onto cathodes, or the Miller process uses chlorine gas to skim off impurities. After refining, we hit 99.5% purity or better. The liquid metals poured into molds, 1-ounce coins, 400-ounce bars, cooled, stamped, and voila bullion. Each bar is tracked with serial numbers for authenticity. But it's not just rocks and machines, this is a business. Exploration geologists pinpoint deposits years ahead, costing $1 to $5 million per site. Mining permits take 1 to 3 years, navigating governments and locals, think $50,000 to $500,000 in fees. Operations run 24-7 with labor at $1,000 to $4,000 per month per worker, depending on the country. Logistics move door globally, $10 to $20,000 per shipment. Refiners sell bullion to banks, jewelers, or investors, riding gold prices, $2,400 an ounce today. A mid-sized mine might churn out $120 million a year, but after $70 million in costs, energy labor taxes, profits $50 million, tight, but scalable. One last piece, reclamation. Mines must restore land post-extraction, plant trees, treat water. It's a $1 to $10 million bill, mandated by law in places like Peru or the US, ensuring the earth heals after the gold rush. So, from rocks crushed to bullion stacked, mining gold and silver is a gritty, high-stakes journey. It's engineering, chemistry, and big business rolled into one, turning ancient ore into modern wealth. Next time you see a gold bar, you'll know the epic story behind it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.